Biology is the study of life, but have you ever wondered what does it mean to be alive? We attempt to answer this question by examining some characteristics of living organisms. The first characteristic of life is that living things are organized. This diagram is our organizational hierarchy. It's also a road map for where we're going to be going throughout the semester. If we begin down at the bottom of this diagram, this represents the atomic level of organization. This is the simple level of organization, and in Chapter 2 we'll be looking at atomic structure, looking at things like protons and neutrons and electrons and organizing and assembling atoms. And then we'll take those atoms and we will assemble molecules. Molecules then can form very, very large biological, what we call macromolecules. These are things like DNA and proteins and lipids. These macromolecules then can be assembled to form a cell. In Chapter 3, we'll be looking at cell anatomy and cell physiology. The cell is the lowest level of organization that we do consider to be alive. There are many different types of cells. You see here depicted in this diagram plant cells or a nerve cell. Many different specialized cells. These specialized cells then can be assembled and organized into tissues. So we have things like muscle tissue, bone tissue, nervous tissue. These tissues then can be placed into organs, organs then into organ systems, and then up at the top of the diagram you see the entire organism. Another characteristic of life is that living things must acquire energy. In fact, all of these other characteristics that we're going to be discussing do require that the organism have energy. They can acquire that energy in different ways. Some, some organisms we call autotrophs. Auto means self. Troph refers to energy. Uh, sometimes this is translated as self-feeders. These are organisms that are photosynthetic. Plants, algae, some bacteria, they can capture the energy in sunlight to make their own food. Other organisms we call heterotrophs. Hetero means other. Uh, these organisms must have some other preformed carbon source for food. Uh, so heterotrophs have to eat something. Our last group we call the saprotrophs. These are decomposers, very, very important in ecological systems. Saprotrophs include things like bacteria and fungi that break down uh, dead, decaying organisms. Another characteristic of life is that living things must reproduce. Certainly, if we're going to have any continuity of life, organisms must be able to pass their genetic information on to the next generation. There are a couple of different schemes for reproduction. Sexual reproduction generally involves two parents uh, producing haploid gametes. Those gametes then can reform at fertilization uh, to produce the next generation. Some organisms, however, undergo asexual reproduction, where a single parent can divide and in turn produce the next generation. Our next characteristic of life is that things respond to stimuli. A stimulus is some change in the environment. It could be a sound, it could be oxygen concentration or water quality. Many different things could constitute a stimulus, some change that occurs, but the organism then can respond to that change. The response to stimuli in turn determines the behavior of the organism. Another characteristic of living things is that they are homeostatic. This will be a very important topic that we will be discussing throughout the semester. The word homeostasis translates into staying the same or maybe steady state. It really doesn't mean that nothing changes inside a living organism, but rather it's a dynamic equilibrium. Living organisms try to maintain a relatively stable environment. So as things change inside the organism, this could be things like pH, oxygen concentration, glucose concentration, many different factors, organisms try to reduce that fluctuation. 
these different things are maintained within a very, very narrow physiological range. And so these are some things that we will be discussing throughout the semester. The next characteristic of life is that living things grow and develop. So throughout the lifetime of the organism, they will go through some physical changes, some anatomical changes, also some physiological changes. Uh, so depicted here in this diagram, we see a small germinating acorn, and then over time that grows and develops and changes into the mature tree. One last characteristic of life is that living things adapt. Now, many students will confuse adaptation with homeostasis. Homeostasis is a relatively immediate change. Something happens and the organism immediately responds. So, for example, if oxygen concentrations in the blood get too low and they begin to fall out of that narrow physiological range, the organism is going to respond. It would respond through increased heart rate, maybe increased blood pressure, increased respiratory rate. But these are immediate types of changes. Adaptation occurs over many, many years and many generations. Adaptation occurs in a population when specific individuals are more suited to large environmental change. This could be a change, large change in, say, the climate. And when we look at this population, because of genetic variation within the population, there are going to be certain individuals that are more suited, that will be more successful. And so over time, over generations, the entire population can change. So this would be adaptation, uh, can require many years, many generations. We'll be discussing this later in the semester whenever we discuss natural selection and evolution. This is based in the adaptation of living organisms. So in summary, the characteristics of life are living things are organized, living things must acquire energy, living things must reproduce, living things respond to stimuli, living things are homeostatic, living things grow and develop, and living things adapt.